this experiment is going to be looking at the effect of pH on enzyme activity. Now, the first thing we need is our enzyme, and that is why I am blending up some celery with water to produce a celery solution that is going to contain the enzyme catalase. Bit of an art attack here. Here's one I made earlier. So, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to get hydrogen peroxide, which is what catalase works on. Then I'm going to get a pH buffer 3, pH buffer 9, and pH buffer 12, which is the range across which we're going to test the effect of pH. The washing up we get there is to trap the oxygen that's going to be produced as catalase breaks down hydrogen peroxide to produce oxygen, which will be then trapped in, as the, in the form of foam by that washing up liquid. Now, to start, what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure out 10 milliliters of celery solution, and I'm going to add to graduated cylinder 1, and then I'm going to do the exact same thing with graduated cylinder 2 and graduated cylinder 3. Once I have measured out this 10 milliliters into all three, I'm going to add in some washing up liquid, which is going to be very important because, like I said, that's going to trap the oxygen to make foam, which will give us an idea of the rate of activity because if you measure the volume of foam produced per minute, this is a direct correlation to enzyme activity. You can just see there I'm adding a few drops of washing up liquid into each of the graduated cylinders. And once that's done, I can start measuring out my pH buffer. So I'm going to get a couple of more small little graduated cylinders. These are new ones that are completely clean. There's nothing in them. As you can see, I'm going to take them out of the press. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure out 10 milliliters of each pH buffer. So the first one I'm going to do is pH buffer 3. It's slightly darker than the other two, and that's how I do it with three without putting it to the camera. And then what I'll do is the exact same thing with pH buffer 9 and pH buffer 12. And I'm just going to add them to the graduated cylinders that already contain the celery juice and the washing up liquid. There's going to be no reaction to begin with because the reaction won't start until I've added in the hydrogen peroxide later. So there is pH buffer 3. I've added it into the furthest away graduated cylinder there. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing with pH buffer 9 and pH buffer 12. So same thing, new small little graduated cylinder, pH buffer 9, got to measure out nine or 10 milliliters of it, added the graduated cylinder 2, and then I'll do the exact same thing with pH buffer 12 and added the graduated cylinder 3. The pH buffers just maintain the pH throughout the reaction of this enzyme. Now, while I'm doing that there, the final step is going to be measuring out 10 milliliters of hydrogen peroxide because like i said that is going to be the substrate upon which the catalase enzyme works so you can see there i have my hydrogen peroxide i've treated the graduated cylinders ready to go but it's really important that i note the initial volume here so i'm going to get my little notepad i'm going to write down the initial volume in graduated cylinder one two and three because then when i add the 10 milliliters of hydrogen peroxide i have my initial volume and then the reaction will take place foam will be produced and i'll be left with a final volume from which i will take the initial volume away and that will give me the volume of foam produced per minute which is a direct indicator of the enzyme activity so you can see there now i'm just measuring out the hydrogen peroxide once that's done i can add it into the individual graduated cylinders these three graduate cylinders with 10 milliliters of hydrogen peroxide are going to be ready to go now. And straight away, what I'll do is I'll add them into each graduate cylinder. I will note the time on my own watch so that after a minute, I can register the volume produced. And here we go. So 10 milliliters of hydrogen peroxide into pH buffer 3. As you can see, there's not much reaction in the background there. 10 milliliters of hydrogen peroxide into pH buffer 9. Straight away, foam starts to be produced. 10 milliliters into pH buffer 12. Again, foam starts to be produced pretty much straight away. pH buffer 3, there is nothing really going on. pH buffer 9, it's a rapid production. A pH buffer 12 isn't that far behind. So what we can say here is catalase works best at pH buffer 9, but it still has a rate of activity that's pretty good around pH buffer 12, but it has very, very, very little activity at pH buffer 3. It has more than likely been denatured. And therefore it cannot work because it's lost its shape and therefore its ability to function so you can see ph buffer 9 did end up having the greatest volume of foam produced which would suggest that ph buffer 9 is the point of optimal activity for catalase production